All right, I'm super excited to be here with Logan Clark, a uh, a catcher in the Cleveland Guardians organization. Logan, how's it going, man? It's going great. Thanks for having me on. It's a uh, bus, and I appreciate it. Yeah, no, dude. Like I said, like I told you before we jumped on here, Joe's a good guy, and uh, as soon as he reached out to me, I'm like, yeah, man, we got to get you on. Uh, so I'm hyped to talk to you. Uh, just drafted recently. This is going to be your first full um, spring training. How has your off season been? My off season has been really good. I feel really good. I put on a lot of muscle. Been working my butt off, getting up super early in the morning, and just really hitting the weight room really hard because you know high school was a big difference compared to uh, the big boys. So I'm just trying to get my uh, body ready for you know how many games I got to catch opposed to thirty. Yeah, and now I got to catch like a hundred or something like that. So it's uh, it's definitely a jump, but I'm super excited to attack it. Yeah, and you talked about high school, dude. You went to obviously you grew up in California. I'm actually originally from California, uh, the Bay Area uh-huh. though. Uh, California is no joke when it comes to like baseball talent. There's talent all over California. Um, so it's cool that you just shows how how good you are compared to everyone else that you able to get drafted, uh, especially at high school. How was your, like, your baseball team, and like when did your when did you start really taking it serious? Uh, I started taking it serious as soon as I could walk, to be honest <laughs> with you. I mean, yeah. I was never a very good athlete, so I always busted my butt and tried to do uh, the best I could. But I would say definitely started taking it serious in terms of I really wanted to get to the next level. When I was um, about 12 years old, I went to my dad, and we just started working and then trying to get exposed. And then we're actually in a small community where I'm at. Um, so it's a little bit harder to get exposed over here. So it's always driving like two to three hours just to try to get a look. Yeah. So I didn't really start breaking through, I would say, until my uh, junior uh, summer. Nice. And um, because of uh, Mike and Joseph, they really helped me, um, you know, get seen a lot more. Yeah. And so that's uh, the biggest reason I'm here now. So it's uh, cool to have people in my corner that ultimately helped me get here because it's pretty tough to just get there by yourself. So you got to have a little bit of luck and, you know, faith and people that are going to be willing to support you. Yeah. What part of California are you? Are you like from the Fresno area, like central California, or is that still Southern California? No, I'm a, it, I would be in the Southern. So like uh, Fresno would be kind of more up North mm-hmm. for us. And then uh, LA is just down South. So it's like, I'm kinda, it's funny. I'm in the middle between uh, both of them. Okay. So I'm two hours each direction. So oh, nice. it's kind of cool. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's cool. That's cool. And like I said, like there's so much talent in there. Um, was there how good was your school? Like your high school was it pretty good? Because like I said, I mean, you're, you said you mentioned a small town, but I mean, even still, there's a ton of talent. Yeah, no, we're okay. We're, we're a super competitive school. We because uh, we're a smaller school, we'll take our bumps and bruises every once in a while. But you know, but the the year I played, we built a really good program, and. Um, it, we were pretty good, so it was fun to play with all my teammates mm-hmm. I kind of grew up with, but we were good. We weren't you no know, Notre Dame or one of them, but I felt like our uh, our team did really well for you know where we're at, for sure. Um, were there any other guys who went D1 or drafted out of your school or no? No, I was the only uh, D1 commit and uh, draft prospect. I, uh, someone hasn't got drafted out of our school in like 60, not 60 or 90 years or something like that. Oh, you're the first person in like 60, 70 plus years to get drafted out of your school? Yeah. Wow. That's crazy. Okay. I would have never thought about that, especially just being in the California area. I thought you you guys would just be pumping out talent like every other uh, season. Yeah. No, it's like we do have like really good talent and maybe some guys that probably can get a look, but it's just tough because sometimes, you know, it's tough to get your kid out to a perfect game yeah. or certain things like that. So that's like the biggest reason, but we definitely have some big talent. It's just, you know, it's rough. Yeah. Small town. When did you commit? Cause obviously like, you talked about, you got drafted, but you were committed to Cal state, uh, Bakersfield or no Cal state. Yes, sir. Yeah. yeah. I committed my sophomore summer during Jeez. COVID because that was all crazy. So I was like, all right, well, I want to have a place to land. Yeah. Jeremy Beard was a good guy and a good friend to us. So, um, that was the best spot for me. I felt like, so you're 13, 14 years old, already uh, already committed to uh, college. I would I would have been so cocky heading into my junior season <laughs> or junior year of high school, just walking around like, all right, you know, a D1 commit, no big deal. That's pretty sick, though. 
Yeah, it's cool. It's uh, yeah, no, I definitely was always humbled yeah. by my pop. He always made sure. Good for him. He always made sure I was pretty grounded, and so did my grandpa. So they did a really good job with me. They were always make sure I understand, not get too high yeah. and too low. Just try to stay in between always. So it's definitely it's definitely easy to get cocky yeah. in a big head because you know it's it's cool to be able to have that you know thing because a lot of people don't. Yeah, no, for sure. And you, you talked about being grounded and shout out to your pops and your mom and family and all that for just kind of growing you and kind of supporting you that way. Um, but what advice would you give to like other high school kids um, in, in trying to stay grounded? Because obviously baseball is such a mental game and it's, the mental side is so important. Yeah, I would just say the biggest thing is one, if you have a bad day, it doesn't mean you have to go hit a thousand balls off the tee. <laughs> And it's like, that's what people get misconstrued, yeah. but it's mainly just, you know, having someone in your corner, whether it be a family member or a friend, just make sure, you know, they push you in an aspect of not necessarily, you know, pumping your ego with baseball, but telling you stuff that you don't want to hear. It's better to hear stuff you don't want to hear because, you know, and just make sure you look in the mirror. Yeah. It's really important to do that. And it's more important to be a great person than it is anything else because no one wants to hear like, Oh, I'm the best, and then you go out and you uh, go 0 for yeah. 4, and now you got people just not liking you. So it's better to just kind of keep your mouth shut and play and just try to build a good rapport with everybody. That's kind of what I've learned, and uh, just it's bigger than the game of baseball. So that's, like, the biggest thing. And if you have a religion or you don't, but my biggest way I stay grounded is definitely through uh, being a Christian okay. and trying to read my Bible and just do so as much as I can and just be – aware of everything that's kind of going on that's awesome that's awesome were you just a baseball player or in high school or did you play other sports too uh, i played football as well what, what position i played uh, defensive end and i actually uh, i was gonna play quarterback as well and then COVID hit so i was like dang that'd have been, <laughs> that'd have been a blast yeah that would have been sick um wait what were your stats like were you like a lockdown what you said defensive back uh defensive end yeah defensive end okay that's awesome like how what were well what point did you think like um, all right, baseball is like my main my main path to like college or even like pro. Uh, I would definitely say my freshman year. Okay. Like I always felt like it was you know always my main yeah. thing because it's kind of what I've always done. But uh, I went in my freshman year and it was funny. I remember my first about I struck out and I was like, dang, that's like that's a whole way to start. <laughs> and then I got a triple. And then after that, it just kept rolling. And I wound up batting like five forty and I. So it was like, okay, like I can, I can, yeah. I feel like I can do this at a high level. So that's like, I knew a hundred percent, like, this is what I want to do. You, you were just kind of looking around the other guys in your area, like, all right, I might be a little nastier than the average, <laughs> than the average kid around here. Yeah, definitely. I was like, yeah, my arm, my arm feels pretty good compared to these guys. So yeah. I was like, I'm going to, I'm going to give her a head. Did you pitch as well? Or were you just strictly like catching? Yeah, it's, it's funny. I actually pitched my sophomore year and, uh, they had me pitch in a tournament, and I wound up getting MVP for pitching. So it was kind of, it was kind of funny. I did I wasn't no great pitcher, yeah. but if you throw hard in high school, it tends to work. Yeah. So I just get up there and throw real hard and kind of blow by everybody. How, how hard were you throwing? Uh, like low low nines. Jeez, and they didn't they didn't draft you as a, a pitcher at all? Because I mean, I guess in California you're throwing no, low nines. It's nothing. No, yeah, no, I. I was like, I don't want to accidentally. Uh, it, we, and my buddies, had a joke. It's like, no, nah, I don't want to accidentally throw too hard. And they say, nah, catch it, just not your, <laughs> not your thing no more. Because if I had one bad game, I hitting, they're gonna be like, nah, he's a PO now. Yeah. So I did. And my all the thing is, I love hitting and I love catching that aspect of the game. So I was like, no, nah, I'm just junior and senior year. I'm just gonna catch. Yeah. So you you didn't want to be the next Shohei, just two way player. Hey, if it if it comes along, it comes <laughs> along. So. <laughs> No, that's interesting because I've, I've, I've heard guys, I've talked to guys who like, yeah, I was strictly, or I was a two-way player and then I go to college or I get drafted and they're like, yeah, we no, we're, we're going to keep you either hitting or we're going to keep you either th uh, pitching. Um, it's so hard, obviously, to do both, which when you look at Shohei, that just, you, you know, you just give that extra level of respect, like, dang, like, oh, <laughs> it's crazy that he's able to do uh, both and at a high level. Yeah, no, it's definitely because, you know, especially as a catcher, if I got to go, I'm already throwing a lot in the game, and then I got to pitch and do that. It's just so much yeah. wear and tear in my arm. So it's like, like you said, I mean, Shohei, and he's what, playing first and outfield two now, so yeah. it's kind of crazy. <laughs> Who knows what they have him doing? I mean, he has the uh, the ability 
to do whatever he wants. Like he's so gifted athletically. Like he can, like he's just a, a beast when it comes to that. So who knows what he, what he's doing? But uh, yeah. Uh, so speaking of uh, committing to uh, Bakersfield and stuff like that, um, how were the college visits? Like, were there any other universities that are interested in you or uh, colleges or JUCOs? Yeah, no, I had a, uh, I had quite a bit of D ones that were interested. Like, <clears throat> I had Virginia, oh, nice. and then I was talking to like UCLA, and, like a lot of these schools. But it was just so tough during um, COVID. COVID, yeah. and it was like I wanted to make sure I didn't know how long that was going to last. So I wanted to make sure I had a spot to go yeah. to, and I felt like it was a good spot. But I had I had quite a bit of colleges that I was talking to, some big powerhouse colleges. But um, CSUB is in the Big West, and I felt like it was a good spot to go. Yeah, no, and you're, you stay not too far from like your hometown, probably like an hour or so. I would imagine not too far. Yeah. Um, that's pretty cool. How mad were they, Logan, when you told them, Hey man, I'm getting drafted and I'm not going to, you know, it's actually, I was actually really happy how, uh, coach handled it because he, uh, you know, it's always a worry. You're like, Hey coach, you know, it's yeah. like, you aren't upset, but you don't want to hurt that guy. Yeah. You know, it's like, I'm not coming here no more. He goes, you know what? That's awesome. And during the whole thing, they were kind of texting me and just, you know, giving me praises like, Hey, you know what? If like, you don't, then just know you do have a home, but if you do like, you're always going to be a runner. So it was really cool to be able to hear that stuff yeah. and, you know, have that support from your college and wanting them to see, you know, you go on to the next level, even though if that's not getting you. Yeah. So it was really cool to be able to call and be like, you know, coach, I'm not going to be there. He goes, all right, well, that's awesome, bud. Like this and the other, if you need anything, just like let us know if you need to practice. So I was like, okay, cool. So it was cool to be able to have such a supporting college and that. That's awesome. So draft day, like how was that experience? Because I saw a video uh, I think it was on Twitter or something kind of floating around of, of when you got drafted with your family and all that kind of stuff. But um, how was that whole experience? It was awesome. I mean, we I was actually sicker than a dog that day. I don't know. Worst day to be sick, right? Yeah. And so I get we get up and we're just kind of – and the night before we had a lot of phone calls. And then that morning we were having phone calls by a lot of teams. Mm-hmm. And um, we were just trying to make a decision. And we we honestly didn't know when I was going to get picked up. So I was talking to Joseph, talking to everybody. Like, yeah, we were just trying to figure it all out. So I'm sitting there on my, my couch. And, well, the Cubs call. Oh. And then it was like, okay, like, whatever. We made a deal or whatever. And then they took another catch. What round was, was this? Like, Dang it, okay. I don't know. Oh. And then my agents text me. And they go just like this. Hey, love, congratulations. Uh, you know, good good job. And I was like, what do they mean? They said, uh, we'll tell you later. Congrats. <laughs> and then not even like 10 seconds later, I got picked up by uh, the Guardians. I was like, what the heck? Yeah. They came out of nowhere because they didn't talk to me. Oh, so wow. I was super pumped. So like before that whole process, obviously, uh, when, when you're in college, there's like questionnaires you fill out, you know, you do the interviews. Um, is it kind of similar for like getting drafted out of high school? Like, I don't know how much they're able to like communicate with you and kind of stuff. Or is it just going through Joseph? Uh, the proteins. Yeah. yeah, no, I did. Uh, but I did an interview actually with the Guardians, okay. and um, there was a lot of teams that I did interviews with. But no, they can talk to me as much as yeah. they want. But in terms of money and stuff like that, uh, Joseph and them took care of it for yeah. me. We had a dollar amount that we wanted, and uh, they knew, and so they took care of all that stuff for me. And I just basically went out there and played baseball which is really awesome yeah that's incredible so you're you're 17 or say 18 years old you get drafted you go from being a broke high school kid to all of a sudden having a little chunk of change um what what was that feeling like of like all right i i'm no not a poor high school kid anymore you know i have a little bit of money here like what was that maybe the first yeah it was definitely like you look in your bank account you're like okay like i got some money now it's not mom and dad's money so it's a cool feeling but uh, it was always important to me, you know, I always can get a return investment on my stuff. Because yeah. so before all that, I was wanting to figure out what I wanted to do. I was like, all right, I'm going to spend, you know, whatever amount I want mm-hmm. that I've always wanted. And so I did that. And now it's just building my money yeah. back up and that type of thing. What was the first big purchase you bought? First big purchase I bought, let me think. Because I've talked to guys who, like, I, I bought a, one guy told me he bought, like, a, a mailman style Jeep where you drive on the other side of the, like, a European style. One person, you know, like, I've talked to guys who bought chains, who, different things, you know, but, like, what was uh, maybe that one first thing you bought? Yeah, I actually, what's crazy, though, is, like, I didn't buy anything big. Like, I never went, like, oh, I'm going to buy this because I didn't have anything in my head. Yeah. 
thing that I want to buy. It was like the first thing that came to my mind is like my little brother's basketball game was coming up, and I wanted him to have some cool basketball shoes. Oh, so I bought stuff like that. So I didn't buy anything actually crazy. I'm thinking about buying a truck now, but I was like, but in terms of like a big purchase, yeah. I actually haven't bought one just yet because I'm trying to wait and let yeah. my money build. What kind of what kind of truck are you looking to buy? Uh, it's gonna be a Ford F one fifty, and it's lifted, and it has it's called like a spider. Oh, sick! Spider web or something. Like that. Oh, I forget. The, yeah, the, I don't know, but that sounds cool. <laughs> yeah, no, it's it's a cool truck. So we'll see what happens. That's awesome. So um, you're heading into your first. Um, oh, actually, before I talk about that, so was there ever like uh, a doubt, or maybe how hard was that decision to go pro versus um, college? Uh, not hard. It wasn't hard at all for me. I was, I always told myself I was little, I want to play pro baseball, yeah. not college baseball. Yeah. And that's no knock on college. It's just my goal is to get in the big leagues and make a really big impact. So it's always been pro. So as soon as I got that call, money was right that I went. Was there a round that if you got drafted, you're going to be like, nah, or was it just, just a bonus, any bonus? It, it was just about the yeah. money because it's like you hear about people get drafted in the last round and still get a ton of money. So it wasn't necessarily a round. It wasn't like a – because I feel like round-wise, you know, it's more of a pride thing too because sure. there's some guys that get a lot of money that get drafted later. So it was definitely – because we got calls in the fifth round too. Oh, okay. And it was just, you know, money wasn't right because they're trying to do money savers. Yep, so yep. it's stuff my agents understand I don't. But Yeah. Yeah, baseball is the one cool. sport where it's like you don't – you you get drafted. It's it's all like people will draft somebody like a senior sign just to like save money so they can <clears throat> you know sign the next round and spend more money on that person. Yeah. It's it's the weirdest like dynamic and it's different than every other draft like NBA football and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, no, hundred percent. Um, like how nervous were you like at draft? You, you talked about you were being sick and stuff like that. Like, um, like were you were you pretty calm otherwise, or were you just like you know it's like what was that environment like? Or emotional, I guess, like. Yeah, no, it was just mainly, like, looking around my family and, like, hoping I can land it just so they can see yeah. it, and, you know, get it, get that feeling out of the way. It was not necessarily I was nervous. It was just really anxious because, like, all right, like, if I do this, then I'm starting a big step in life, yeah. and I'm actually, I'm an adult. So it was, like, things I was thinking about like that, like, okay, how do I want to handle this? Yeah. So it was more anxious to just see like what will happen after, like okay, what is next? Yeah, no, for sure. Uh, so now this, you're heading to your first um, official um, off or spring training. Um, you went to rookie ball, I'm assuming, right after draft, right? Like, how soon do they send you to Arizona for that? Uh, like in three days. <laughs> so it, it was pretty quick. It's a pretty quick turnaround. So it was like, all right, but you're getting drafted, but you don't know, start packing your bags because yeah. you're at, you're heading over here. So I was like, oh, shoot, okay, yeah. well, and, let's go. Yeah, that's basically like summer ball or college ball, basically, when you're in, in rookie ball. It's not – I don't think there's any barely any fans. Um, it, the whole experience is probably different. There's, like, Dominican guys throwing 100 miles per hour. Um, what was your whole introduction to, like, the minor leagues like, even though it was still rookie ball? Yeah, no, so I, I get there that day, and I'm just kind of looking around, taking our facilities, and then – um, I go to sleep that night and then wake up and I wake up to, we go down in like the clubhouse in that area and they had breakfast for all of us. And I didn't know they do all that. I thought like maybe we had to make our own yeah. stuff. So the, I made my own breakfast. <laughs> I go down there. I'm already full. And I, well, when I go down there, there's a bunch of food and they're just giving us like cool introductions and telling us about the program. Like, Oh, this is awesome. Yeah. I don't even have to cook. <laughs> so it was uh it was really cool and then being able to play with some high level people and then having so much diversity in baseball i think is really really cool and not being able to talk to your teammates wanting to learn other languages just so you can yeah no for sure and it, it's like i said there's so many like there's a lot of i guess there's in 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 rookie ball there's a ton of like latin players like i said who just throw like triple digits and stuff um what was like your first introduction or like how different was like the level of competition versus uh when you're in high school yeah yeah so <laughs> it was funny my first bat fastball high and i get out of the way i was like dang that almost got me and then i got a curveball that buckled my knees i was like yeah this is a high school ball no more <laughs> so it was it was definitely that. I was seeing some pitching, and I was like, okay, it's going to take me a minute yeah. to start getting adjusted. So I'm just taking my pitches, kind of taking 
uh, my lumps with it and um, eventually started to figure it out and felt really good. I felt like I was seeing the ball good. It was just, you know, you don't see a hundred miles per hour in high school. So it was definitely, it was definitely an adjustment for a little bit. And then catching those guys, it's actually, to me, it feels a little bit easier if you just want to talk fastballs, mm -hmm. certain pitches, because they don't, they don't really throw balls, balls. Mm -hmm. Cause in high school, you know, you're going to get like five balls off or whatever, but there they're going to maybe miss a ball and a half off. So it's like, it's cool to be able to set up outside and it's actually going to be outside. Yeah. So that's like what a big thing was for me too. And it's just crazy. I'm like the baseball IQ mm -hmm. was even dis different in a sense, because it's like, you're doing different cutoffs. Now you're doing so many different things. So it's just like, mainly like your first year, you're just trying to sit there and be quiet mm -hmm. and just learn because that's all you're trying to do. Like when I go in there, I'm just going to be trying to learn and go, to some veterans because you know it's a new thing i don't know what i'm doing i'm a rookie yeah. so i'm just gonna figure all that stuff out but it's definitely definitely an adjustment that you have to make not only physically but mentally mm -hmm. as well no for sure who was maybe or i'm sure that you play with some guys but who's maybe one guy you play with in in high school or uh travel ball who was just like that dude's an absolute stud like he's he's for sure like a pro player uh, definitely my buddy AC, uh, Austin Charles. He got drafted by the Royals. We grew up playing with each other, and um, we always kind of knew AC would definitely land a spot, and we were always super close, always going to the same events and stuff. So it was really cool to see him get land um, the Royals, but definitely uh, AC for sure. That's cool. Um, so heading into uh, spring training, like what is maybe one thing you're – most excited about i'm just excited to meet everybody to be honest with you just kind of see i'm just really anxious to see how it all goes yeah. how long the days are because i love being on the baseball field i want more reps so it's like really cool to just be able to meet everybody because everybody's going to be there yeah. and just see all like the kids running around and just that type of thing so it's that's what i'm looking for is just baseball and a little bit of more baseball because that's kind of what i want to do and just see how it goes and keep my mouth shut and just mm -hmm. try to learn as much as I can. Oh, for sure. Is there anybody you're most excited to meet? You know, I, it's funny. I got asked that and I really don't know because it's like, I'm not, I'm not sure. Like, I really don't know. Like I haven't got starstruck. I'm sure it's going to happen sooner or later, yeah. but I've never really, I try not to think about it because then when it happens, it's like, Oh shoot, yeah. like, that's my guy. So it's like I'm just trying to go in there and act like I don't know anybody. Yeah, hey, that's that's one way to do it, and that's probably uh, a healthy way um, instead of focusing on that and just kind of letting your mind like focus on that and kind of when when you get to that moment, kind of freak you out like whoa. Uh, so, what is your favorite part as a yeah. baseball player? Like, do you enjoy um, like w as a catcher? I guess like what is your favorite part? Um, either hitting or catching, um, calling the game. Like, what most excites you when you play baseball? Yeah, def it's definitely – I love hitting, but it's there's nothing better than catching and just trying to get your, the best out of your pitcher. I just try to make sure I get the best out of people and just the throwing a dude out. Yeah. It's like the great – it's the greatest throw because it's hard to do. Those guys are fast, but it's definitely just really trying to control the game and manage the game the best I can. It's like, all right, like I just got a good frame. Yeah. That's that's good. And, it, it, and it's cool, though, too, because it goes unnoticed. But it's like you're supposed to do yeah. it, so it's like it's it's definitely a cool aspect in terms of that. But calling, there's nothing better than calling a good game as well. What, what, you know, your pit, you and your pitcher on rhythm. He's not shaking you off, or just rolling right into everything, and it feels it, it, that's really good when you guys are in the same uh, mindset. What would you rather do? Throw someone out a second or hit a home run? Man, that's that's a tough question. It depends on the scenario. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Because if it's a game winning home run, then you know I'm going to pick home run. But it's definitely like. I feel like home run and throwing someone out, I get the same amount of uh, joy sure. out of it. So when you when you're not playing baseball, what do you do for fun? Like, did you like do you are you a golfer? Because like, there's a ton of guys, uh, baseball players who golf, uh, gamer. Like, what what is your thing? Yeah, I uh, when I'm home, I just try to do whatever my little brothers want to do when I'm done on the course of the day. So he likes to play basketball. I'll play basketball. I enjoy doing that. And golf as well. So. And then I'll hop on the video game every once in a while because that's fun to hop on with the boys yeah. and do that. But definitely just trying to still, like, do something active. Yeah. 
because I don't really like to be inside all the time. What about what do you do to hype yourself up like pregame? Do you have like a specific routine that you do, a certain type of music? No, I me, I can be like laughing and joking right before the game, and then once I step on the field, I just have a switch and I'm just like, oh, wow. I'm locked in. Like, I don't have to listen to music or yeah. anything because that's just kind of how I've always been. And I'm really, I'm a really energetic player. Mm -hmm. So it's once I get on the field, it's it's kind of over. Like I don't need any energy drinks, no ritual where I got to touch my left arm twice before I go out or something like that. So I, I just try to go out there and do my thing. Yeah, there's so many superstitious people in in baseball. It's funny, and like I mean, hey, if it it works until it doesn't. So I mean, if you don't even have that, that's you know, kudos to you. You don't have to worry about that kind of stuff. Yeah, I remember when I was little though. I was definitely superstitious. I had a tournament. I was hitting really good and my dad goes all right can you throw your pants in the wash i was like no shot <laughs> i swear those things could have got up and walked on themselves yeah. but that's a different you story. gotta do what you gotta do hey, where, where did you play travel ball at did you uh so we actually had a team growing up when i was younger it was uh called the longhorns okay. and i played with them until i was 13 but the main team i was kind of playing with was the socal cubs I played with the SoCal Giants one time and NorCal. It was just, I was all over the place. I didn't have really a set mm -hmm. home of like where I actually played. I was just kind of bouncing all over. Okay. Um, last thing I want to talk about before we go. Um, obviously, Joseph is the one who connected us and uh, his agency. Um, for those out there or maybe, you know, guys in a similar situation, like what is your advice on choosing an agent, an agency, and that whole process of uh, like the representation side of baseball? Yeah, I'm going to just say the biggest thing is, like, talk over with your family. Figure out exactly what you're wanting out of a person mm -hmm. agent. Are you wanting him to take all your money? I mean, what exactly are you What exactly are you wanting mm -hmm. out of it? My biggest thing was I want a really great person and have the same beliefs and same things I do. And it's like we can sit around a table and be good family friends, yeah. if that makes yeah, sense. Yeah, no, for sure. So it, my biggest thing was definitely to have, like, a good rapport with everybody. Feel like I could trust mm -hmm. them. Because there's a lot of people you can't trust. So I just want to make sure I was able to trust them. Whatever they were telling me, I can 100% believe in that they're doing their best. And then obviously, I'm doing my yeah. best. So it's definitely, you got to like know exactly what you're wanting. And it's a conversation you have to have with them and then also your parents and get a feel for it. But don't get excited because it happens to a lot of people. You get your first call of an agent because it's cool and you want to jump yeah. on his, you know, jump on the ship. And it's maybe not the best fit for you. Not saying the guy's a bad dude, but it just wasn't a good fit for you and exactly what you're wanting. Because they're wanting to help me build my brand from the bottom all the way up. Maybe not start at a huge company right away, build up with a brand. Mm -hmm. So it's cool that they want to help me build my own brand, my own name, so I can work my way up that way. Uh, you talk about building your own brand, and I feel like that's so important now because um, there's so many athletes who have – not necessarily their own brand, but in a way, they do have like their own brand, their names kind of associated with different things. Um, what What are your thoughts on that? Like, do you like what? Are, what is your thoughts on building your own brand? Like, do you have any um, ideas on how you want to do that or no? Yeah, I building my brand. I feel like you know, being a Christian and that way, and just trying to build my brand off of that. Being a really hard worker, mm -hmm. but we're definitely still talking about a lot of things ironing a bunch of stuff yeah. out to figure exactly what we're what i'm wanting to do because it's a tough topic it's like okay i want to do my own brand but what exactly sure. you know it's a because you have so many things you want to yeah. do it's like all right, i want to do this i want to do this i want to do this but it's like no you only can have certain things exactly to build your brand so it's just trying to you know get those um down you talk, you mentioned faith a couple times uh and to me that's also an important thing like i'm big on that that's huge especially when it comes to, like grounding you and keeping you kind of in that mindset um like how important is your faith to you and as an athlete like how do you think that's going to benefit you as well as just a person yeah i i mean i feel like it's going to benefit me in terms of maybe not baseball but it's definitely going to help me benefit as a person and know how to treat people sure. because you know it's really tough. Baseball is a tough yeah. thing, but if you're able to, you know, go and still be able to be a great person, people can kind of lean on you mm -hmm. no matter how your days are going. I think that's really important. So I just try to make sure that I'm staying strong in my yeah. faith, doing everything I can because one day baseball is not going to be there no that's more. True. So is, am I, am I going to be noticed as a great baseball player? Am I going to be noticed as a great person? And to me, it's more important to be noticed 
as a great person. Be like, you know what? That guy was really strong in his faith. Yeah. And it's like, I want to be a Tim Tebow in an aspect. Okay. It's like, you know, people are wanting to be like that. Little kids are sure. wanting to be like that. They don't want to do certain things. They want to, it's okay to be, you know, abnormal, as I guess you would say, because to be pro baseball, really do anything, you got to be abnormal because it's not a normal thing. Yeah. Wow. So it's like, that's definitely my biggest thing. And to get there, you're definitely going to need God yeah. and Jesus. So it's it's definitely something you need to have. And it, and if no one does, it's on them. Yeah. I'm not going to judge anybody, but that's that's how I roll and that's kind of how I believe. That's awesome. I, and I'm glad you shared that. That definitely um, is a blessing, I guess, to me and whoever is listening uh, who maybe have a similar faith or who doesn't and maybe might kind of go that direction. So that's that's super huge that you're able to say that. Um, and I think that's a great way to end, Logan. I mean, just kind of talking about that. Um, I'm going to have to have you back on once you kind of got a uh, another season under you. We can talk about minor leagues, the journey that you're going to go on because minor leagues, dude, is no joke, man. The grind, yeah, the grind, the the bus rides, the hotels, or not even hotel motels that you're going to be in, like. It's gonna be uh, it's gonna be a grind for you, but I'm I'm hyped to see what you do, man. I'm like I'm buying low, I'm buying uh, early on this Logan stock, so I'm hyped to see you see your future. Um, and this might be the official Logan podcast, man. I'm just gonna be watching you from now on and kind of hyping you up a little bit. Well, I appreciate that. I really appreciate you having me on, and uh, God bless.